Sweet, Danny. So thanks for coming on the podcast. The first time we've had a VFX artist come in and because VFX is not easy and I have always had a lot of high respect for people who can do motion graphics or like really intense visual effects. So I'm really looking forward to like hearing like what your mind, what goes through your mind when you're editing, you know, pieces. Thank you, man. Thank you. It's good to be here. Thanks for having me. Of course. Of course. So tell us like, so we know you, but maybe some of our followers don't know you. So give us a little background of who's Danny, where are you from? Give us, give us the whole nine. <laughs> Who uh, is I don't know VFX how to answer Danny? that question anymore. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think the, the technical answer is I was born in New Jersey and I just moved to LA from Florida like four months ago. Um, oh. Yeah, I, I had always wanted to be a visual effects artist since maybe I was 13. Um, mm -hmm. And it, it's mostly because of like documentaries, like uh, I want to say it's called Behind the Magic, the, that like ILM documentary that came out uh, in 08 or 09. Mm -hmm. um, I remember watching that and and like thinking that that was a really cool job and like it's something I've always wanted to do, but the film industry to me had always just felt out of reach. And so I, I didn't really mm. give it much more thought other than like, that's cool or it looks cool or it looks like fun. Um, but I also remember like my dad, when we lived in New Jersey was a, a graphic designer and web designer, photo retoucher and pretty much all around a uh, Photoshop wizard. He's been mm. using it since like version one. And so okay. I remember like visiting his office and then seeing uh, these like VFX guys offices in these documentaries and they were like similar. And then that's when I was kind of like, oh, maybe maybe this is a little bit more attainable than than I think it is. Um, and I don't think it was until after I moved to Florida where I discovered Film Riot, the YouTube channel, and uh, they teach a lot of VFX there. And mm. It's mostly done by one guy, and then that's when I was wow. like, "Oh, you know, I, like I actually can have this job if I if I push hard enough for it." Um, mm. And this is where pushing has gotten me so far. Wow. What was one of the first things you've made in uh, like After Effects or something? <laughs> uh, like everyone else, I think it was a lightsaber video. <laughs> Ooh, that's so cool. I remember like awesome. going to a hardware store and like building this little lightsaber hilt and like the bottom of it unscrewed and I would push uh, a like a two e two inch piece of uh, of PVC pipe into it and then, like mm. screw it back in and the, and just like swing it around you know and just like sitting it rotoscoping in After Effects for days and days and days just to make a silly lightsaber video. <laughs> I would love to see that. I would pay money to see you swinging around. <laughs> A lightsaber. Do you, I mean, I could probably find it real quick. <laughs> oh, you gotta find that in a bit. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> but um, dude, that's awesome. So, yeah, I think you have. You know, Danny and I work together at a local brokerage, um, and that's where I met Danny. Um, he was taking my position as I was heading out, and man, I instantly gravitated toward this guy. Like, I was I was trying to show Danny the ropes, and he quickly was like putting me onto so much stuff in the film industry and I was so brand new uh, as I was leaving my job I really I had such a big passion for uh, filmmaking but I only knew what I what I knew and Danny came in with this new mind and put me onto like black magic and a ton of other stuff and it's just amazing it's amazing you're an amazing human being and we really appreciate appreciate you being here man oh thanks man <laughs> <laughs> yeah so how's uh how's LA treating you uh, it's great. The The people are great. The work is great. Um, I, I have been very loud about the fact that I hate the city out here. <laughs> oh, really? Um, yeah, but no, it's super fun. It's like it, LA is just one of those places where you move here and things just like start happening. And so really? I'm really thankful for like the, uh, the opportunities that I've had so far. Uh, and most of them, most of that has be, been because like I, I'm here. Right. What, so yeah. it really is just about being in the right place. It, it, I guess right place, right time, but it's like, is there ever not a good time when you're in LA if you're always there? True, yeah. I've always, I've always likened success to, or 
whatever you define success as, I guess. I've always likened it to um, winning the lottery in the sense that you do have to be very lucky to win the lottery, but if you don't take the time to like drive down to the corner store and actually like buy the lottery ticket over mm. and over and over again, then you're not creating those opportunities for yourself. Um, and so for me, this was, I guess, my lottery <laughs> in some weird way. Yeah, I mean, like, I mean, I have some friends that moved out to LA, you know, after college to, you know, pursue the film industry. And it's like, you know, I never thought, not saying I didn't think they would make it, but, I, you know, my thought is, oh, it's an oversaturated market. Maybe there's too many people or, you know, whatever the case may be, which is probably an assumption a lot of people make. But it's like, you know, whenever I keep up with them, it's like they're always busy. They're always traveling. They're always acting like they are doing literally exactly what they set out to do. And it's, you know, what is it? 2022. They probably moved out there in like 2016. So, you know, just the amount of time that they've been in an area where there's so much opportunity. It's like they and just knowing them like they would never not want to be there, knowing that, you know, as actors and directors, it's like that's like that's where they know they want to be and need to be. Definitely. Yeah, it's the place to be if you want to tell stories and, and get paid for it. <laughs> So what's it like? Oh, go ahead. Sorry. I was going to say, what's it like being, and it's like you've, you've done work, you know, here where we are in Pensacola. You've also, you know, and now that you're in LA, like, what is it like for, you know, just being in the film industry over there compared to how it is over here? Uh, that's an interesting question. I've, I don't think I've really been on anyone's set in Pensacola <laughs> other than like maybe my own, which I don't really count. <laughs> but it is, uh, it's vastly different in the sense that um, the the people in, in Pensacola are way more of a, of a family, I think. And mm -hmm. like there's maybe three or four like big companies in Pensacola and they're all like, they're all best friends and they're all my great mm -hmm. friends too. And, right. but in, out here it's, uh, there's the same sense of camaraderie, but it's not like as tight, I wouldn't say. And, mm -hmm. and also I'm like constantly meeting new people, which is great too. So I, I think there's good parts of both. I, like, I don't think, I don't know. It's, it's really hard to compare them. <laughs> mm -hmm. Totally. I mean, that's, that is fascinating that you say that because like for us it's like we're always here we're always in it so it's like unless you've been elsewhere and it's it's like you know whenever we were talking to Destin about you know his experience at other places it's like you know there is something special and different that what we have in Pensacola compared to everywhere else not that it's good, right or wrong or like that place is the best and this place is not but it's it's different and it's like a good different that you know I feel like everybody kind of gets to feed off of in, in a good way because you know how many times can you go out not saying you but how many times can an individual go out in a community on a set and you know always feel that same, you know, welcomed spirit across the board in the entire community. It's one thing to have it within a company or a few companies, but within the entire community where people can come together, like that's, you know, that's a big deal. And, and, and I know it can only be harder with a bigger city like that, but you know, you get the trade off of, well, there's probably more opportunity for work than there is over here, but you get the mm -hmm. closer tight knit group of, you know, maybe you want to be, maybe you're just starting out as a PA or a grip, but you have the opportunity to be a second AC or direct on a particular shoot that you may not have elsewhere. Exactly. Yeah. Um, oh, I was going to say something, but I forgot what it was. <laughs> <laughs> I, have a, I have a question for you. Is there, so when I was leaving that brokerage, I had no plans besides I knew I was going to start a production company or I knew I was going to start freelancing. So I pretty much ran into it like baptism by fire. You know, I kind of figured everything out within the first three weeks and I felt like uh, I was never going to make it. And, you know, as time goes on, you kind of finally, you get your bearings, you get your feet under you. Um, is there maybe a checklist that you now have after moving to uh, Los Angeles that you may give some of our listeners when, you know, if they're thinking about doing a big move, mm -hmm. say to Atlanta or Los Angeles, New York, 
give a, give them like three things you know s- save um whatever okay some recommendations uh, yeah i think money is definitely the biggest one which sucks because i hate that, that 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 it has to be a factor um mm-hmm. but that was the reason why i stayed at the that job for as long as I did was because I wanted to like save up money and I knew that like once I've squeezed everything I could out, out of that job then I would probably move out here um, I think money is money is the, the thing that you rely on when you're driving across the country and you, you need a place to stay or your tire blows out or whatever or uh, you come out here and your apartment won't be ready for two weeks and you need to be like in an Airbnb which happened to me which <laughs> which was not fun, but I was prepared for it. Um, right. So it wasn't so bad. So definitely, like, save up money, I think, is the most obvious one. Um, mm-hmm. But also, like, I don't think how fast things are moving for me, uh, I don't think it would have moved as fast as it is if I didn't, like, already know people out here. Um, like, work mm-hmm. your network, I would say, because everybody knows somebody and, and my network was some friends that I had known from Panama City Beach actually had known people from Atlanta who know people in LA and so I was <laughs> wow, kind of working yeah. with that yeah it was crazy and I had even I was lucky enough to be on set for like a fashion film in LA at one time and it was wow, the dang. DP for for that film whom we had known through people in LA um, who was the guy who really like uh, introduced me to all of his friends out here. And they're most of the people who are like keeping me busy right now. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think about that a lot is like, if I didn't go on that shoot or if I didn't know him or if I didn't know the people even in Atlanta, sometimes they bring work. Um, if I didn't know like those people, then I would just really be wasting time out here. Um, sure. Yeah. So, so maybe that's the other thing is like, don't rush it. Like wait until you have money. Wait until you have the the things that you need. It's like if someone were to ask you uh, to direct the next Marvel's Avengers movie tomorrow, you might be mm-hmm. like, "Oh my god, I don't, I don't, I don't know what to do about that." And like it would be, you, it would give you a lot of anxiety. But if you yeah. had like the the necessary time for post for pre production, and you actually like planned out how you were going to do it and you had a script and you had a crew that was like dedicated to helping you uh pull this Mm -hmm. thing off then by the time that like you're ready to shoot then you'd you'd be ready to shoot and so i think if you're in a position where you're looking to like make a move or you're you're looking to make a big decision and and you're anxious about it it probably just means you haven't spent enough time like fleshing out the idea which is a good place to be because then you just you just keep planning until you are comfortable with it so that, that's probably what I would say. Save up money, make connections, don't rush. Beautiful. That's yeah. awesome. That's really good because <clears throat> um, kind of gearing back to like specifically what you do with like VFX, it's like, you know, you said that, you know, whenever you were like you watched your dad, you know, doing a lot of Photoshop and then watching a lot of YouTube videos and seeing how, you know, VFX stuff was done and then being able to see the light at the end of the tunnel, like what have been, like what, what's some of the big hurdles that you've had, you know, through that process of, you know, me or not me, but you being a VFX guy. Oof. Uh, I feel like there's always hurdles. Specifically, (laughs) yeah. (laughs) In Pensacola specifically, it's like when I was, when I even decided to break into the film world, it was like I'm going to do VFX. And I quickly learned that nobody out there was going to hire me to do that. (laughs) Especially back, what, that would have been 2012-ish, where like there wasn't even a lot of creative stuff anyway, like happening in Pensacola. And so... Mm that was probably the biggest thing for me was like trying to keep myself busy, trying to like build a portfolio wow. just based off of like personal projects. Um, and then that's sort of how I learned like editing. And I was like, Oh, maybe someone will teach me, will pay me to do editing and like still didn't happen. And then I was like, well, maybe I can learn a camera. And then I shot weddings <laughs> 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 and then, and then, you know, you shoot one wedding, you put a wedding on your portfolio. People 
people will flock to you and ask you to shoot more weddings. And then I definitely went on that path for a few years and like didn't touch After Effects for a long time. So I think the the biggest hurdle is just like, man, it's hard to say like it's it's too niche because I don't think it is. It's just like the location was not good for what I wanted to do. Uh, mm -hmm. And like because it was such a specific thing that I wanted to do, um, and like I was just I was on a different path to where I wanted to go. Right, and it's like you know I say this all the time, whether it's to other business owners or other people in our industry, but it just it feels like Pensacola, particularly, it feels like you know we're a couple years behind in terms of technology. It's not that we are not behind, but it's just like as a whole of people um, utilizing technology, particularly video, to a company's advantage is not where it is relative to bigger cities like LA or Atlanta, Orlando, New York, you name it, they're like, they're ahead of the curve. And we feel, and it, it, it seems like Pensacola is not. And that's kind of a hard, it's a hard, you know, pill to swallow especially for business owners in this field because it's like you know anytime a client comes to me I'm always figuring out you know what's a way that I can incorporate some level of VFX to give them exactly what they want and to be able to fit it in a budget or within their budget and sometimes it happens most of the time it doesn't and it's because you like there are plenty of companies now that are just now using social media and you're like, where have you been? Like social media has been out for so long and you're just now like getting on board with this. So mm -hmm. I totally understand it. And it's like, one, I don't blame you for wanting to move because it's like, or it's like more kudos to you for sticking to what you want to do because like that's who you are deep down. And it's like, if you're not going to get it here in Pensacola, why hang around? <laughs> essentially yeah um i do have fomo either way like being in pensacola <laughs> uh, missing out on something cool in la and being out in la and missing out on all the cool things in pensacola but i do mm -hmm. have like immense respect for the people who are there and, and are busy like mm -hmm. you guys seem right. busy pumping out like insane work well like <laughs> jenny said it is it is definitely growing you know mm -hmm. yeah absolutely but, e even in just the time that i've been there it's like even mm -hmm. in the time that i've left like people are doing crazier and crazier things and i still get fomo for it <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah i mean it's like what i've learned at the end of the day it's like yes like and i think i was saying this with chris the other day just in conversation like you know there's a threshold of how good your videos need to be for that given client like you know obviously if you're doing work for you know a fortune 500 company you know the level of the, you know the product you're gonna have to produce relative to you know a local company that's only making you know hundred thousand dollars it's like you know as long as your threshold is you know good enough you know for that project it's like it all comes down to selling it all comes down to you know being able to communicate effectively for that particular client and it's like you know relatively speaking it's like there's not as many companies that do or can utilize video like there are in bigger markets and I think that's part of it but it's also a testament to understanding that we in the industry we have to know that you still have to sell at the end of the day because like well even though we make really good videos like that video means nothing if you didn't nurture the client through the process because it's like yeah like we just finished you know that video for the bar like I finished it this morning and it's like well that video could have been better than what we shot it, you know, because we had to go to plan B for a couple things. But at the same time, it's like the client was very, very happy with it because I was able to nurture the relationship through the entire thing. You know, and imagine not ever being able to talk to my client from phase one to now. It's like, you probably wouldn't be as happy. So it's like there, it's multifaceted when it comes to interacting with your clients. And I think Pensacola is on the rise to where it's like, you know, we as creators, like, and I hope there are more companies like me, Chris, and yours, Danny, that can, you know, at least help educate and bring the production value up across the board. Because once we do that, then it's like everybody's able to make good videos. And then it's like you'll have to hide, you'll, you'll have to get always have good videos. 
Mm-hmm. True. Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, that's probably one of the things that I struggled with more also in Pensacola was because I also tried to like start my own video production company. I was 18 and there's in Pensacola, it's a lot of B2B. Uh, and there, a lot and of B2B. That's, that's just not something I'm good at. Like I don't speak the language. I'm not a salesman and I, <laughs> I, I'm just not built for it. And so that I, you know, if that business doesn't exist anymore. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think as you've grown, you've gotten a lot, a lot better. Something I wanted to talk about was uh, right before you moved, we hung out at a local coffee shop in Pensacola, and you were just kind of showing me all the outreach you were doing. This is shortly after you left that brokerage, um, and Danny was sending out an enormous amount of emails, um, and I was super impressed. I was like, I am not doing this for my business, and I'm kind of solely like. Uh, focused on the, I need that income, right. To come through my business and I'm not sending out as many emails as he is. So he really, you really inspired me. Can you talk a little bit about that cold emailing that you did, whether it's to other production companies to let them know you exist or other businesses? Yeah. It's a short story though, because nothing really ever came from it. (laughs) (laughs) But I mean, Um, you've met some pretty amazing like editors and things like that and still are in contact with them. People that you get advice from, right? Like friendships. There's a lot of people I get advice from, uh, mm-hmm. mostly on like Instagram, I think. I remember okay. there's one person in particular that I reached out to cold just, oh my gosh, this was years ago at this point. And um, and I, I just like wanted to pick his brain. His name is Patrick Lawler, at Patrick Lawler on Instagram. And uh, he like, I, I would just ask him random questions about VFX or like how he broke into the industry or... Like where he went to school, would you would you even recommend going to school? And he's been sort of my uh, my like guide through all of all of that kind of thing. Mm. I think, and um, even today, like if I have a question about a shot that I want to pull off, I'll still like hit him up and be like, "Hey, uh, how how does this work?" Um, yeah. And he's he's out here in LA, and uh, when I first spoke to him, I was still living in Florida, and I actually like just recently finally got to like have lunch with him and now i can like finally call him my friend and that was a a relationship that like wouldn't have happened if i didn't reach out first um Mm -hmm. but yeah i think most of most of the relationships that i have from like from cold emailing have haven't really even been from emails uh that's some again something i'm just not very good at something that i'm still refining i still like email agencies every every week um Mm -hmm. just like to let them know I exist and uh, and try to like build any sort of communication or any sort of dialogue with them. Um, mm-hmm. But again, I, I, I'm doing something wrong on that. <laughs> well, I, I'm on the same like page as you. I try to do it um, shortly after you left and I probably uh, spent full day, sent like 20 emails out and didn't get one response. Luckily I can see like, I can track who reads my emails um, and one guy kept Looking back through my website and my portfolio, I was like, "Oh, he's gonna respond." Never did. So it's tough. Cold emailing is definitely tough, but yeah, they say uh, the when secret it hits, is it hits. in the follow up. Yeah. Sure, and I never it, followed up. Yep. You should, mm-hmm. you should get on that. <laughs> yeah, I need to get on that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Maybe 100%. maybe the story ends differently. <laughs> yeah, honestly, right? He's just waiting for me to respond. That's funny. Wait a minute. So kind of changing gears or I guess technically not changing gears we're still talking about VFX um um, would it be so we really want to talk about this piece that you had worked on um recently which is like this is what we really want to get you know talking about because we could talk forever about it and this is where we can really learn from you Danny and like because you know anytime we can get inside of a producer, a director, an editor's mind, it's like it opens everything up because we, even including me on the outside, when when anybody looks, you know, through a screen to see what something looks like, we have this assumption, oh, they probably did this, 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 and this. But until you actually get to talk to that individual, you get to see what they did. That's what gets really, really fascinating. Um, so we just we actually just when we want to take, you know, we'll we'll tell you guys about what it is. And, and what the video is. Um, and then once we watch it, then we'll kind of just talk a little bit more about it. Okay, so this is the very first project that I uh, was lucky enough to work on out here in LA. I 
good friend Dennis Williams directed it, and uh, and he asked me to do the VFX on it, and this is this is uh, what we came up with. Cool. They're not ready. Stand by. They're not ready. <laughs> One million views on YouTube. Can't believe it. Ooh. Wow. Right. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Dang. I know it was a little choppy. We'll put it in the show notes for you guys, but dude, amazing work. <laughs> thank amazing you. Work. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah so was, uh, cool. If y'all don't know, that is Russell uh, Westbrook. Westbrook. Yeah. Yes. Uh, the, yeah, it was for his clothing brand, uh, Honor the Gifts. Dude, that's so oh, sick. Oh, sweet. Tell so us about a little you, bit. Yeah. Yeah, tell Go us. Ahead, give us, like, give us <laughs> everything. Like, we kind of want to know, like, you know, what part did you play in this? Did you land the client? Did you get contracted out? So it's like, just because again, like, you know, for a lot of our listeners, maybe they already know how to do these things. Maybe they don't know how to do these things. So it's like the fact that like we all like specifically me and Chris, we all play different roles in the industry. We serve different people, like kind of tell us more about it. Uh, not my client. Um, Dennis Williams is good friends with, uh, I think, Someone who works over there, one of one of their uh, creative directors, I think. I can't cool. quote me on that. Um, but yeah, I can I can tell you how I landed on the project, which yeah, was yeah. very interesting. Uh, it was like oof, the a day or two before. No, it was a week. Okay, it was a week before I moved out to LA, where some of my good friends, uh, Eric and Nisi Hernandez from Atlanta, were visiting uh, Seaside. Florida and I hit them up and I was like hey I miss you guys let's uh let's get lunch so we went got lunch and we just started chatting we were catching up and it was great I love them and then Eric was like hey I have uh I'm shooting at this project next week in LA with uh with Bob Iger <laughs> and and like the CEO of uh of In-N-Out Burger um, wow. I need a camera operator can you come and I said, yes, absolutely, I'll be there. Um, <laughs> and because I was planning on like moving out here anyway. And so on that project, one of their other camera operators uh, was the DP on this Dear Brody project for Honor the Gift. Sweet. Uh, he and Dennis are good friends, and they were looking for a VFX guy. And because I happened to be on set with him, he was like, oh, hey, let me call my guy, Danny. He's like, he's breaking into the VFX industry. Um, and then that led to Dennis came over to our apartment and uh, he showed me the treatment and he showed me one reference photo of like someone staring into a mirror and like seeing their childhood self. Uh, and he was like, can you do this? <laughs> I was like, yeah, totally. And he was like, oh, no, but are you sure you can do this? And I was like, I, I think so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I was like, hey, yeah, 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 yeah. I, got, I got this. I was like, you're, I was like you're, you're overthinking it. How much time do we yeah. have to, like, to prep for it? And he was like, I'm shooting it in two days. <laughs> oh, my gosh. It was like not much time. Yeah, um, oh, no. And so, yeah, I just like, he came over. We, we were just talking about, there, there were... Uh, it was only a handful of shots, maybe like five or six to begin with. Um, mm -hmm. And he just wanted to know like how to shoot them. And mm -hmm. this is this effect in particular is one that's really simple to pull off if it's shot correctly. And if it's not shot correctly, uh. then it's still possible, but it's like it would be a lot more difficult. Like it's way easier to do it 
if the camera is just like on sticks the whole time and they wanted camera motion. Wow. Uh, okay. And so we had to, that's why there's like trackers on the mirror so that way we can motion mm -hmm. track it. Because essentially, if you can think of it as like, um, if you had like two frames and one of them was like Russell Westbrook and the other one is his, his like childhood version of himself and they're both looking into a mirror. If you had those printed out, the way you would make that frame is like you would literally just cut around the mirror and then you would like right. glue it onto the onto the next one and then anything mm -hmm. that like passes in front of the mirror maybe you would like snip it out and then put it on top um and it's the same way in video and after effects works exactly wow. like that um so the, yeah it's a simple simple technique uh but if it's not shot correctly it can definitely be a nightmare and um there was one shot in there, I think, that uh, I, I should have been a little more clear on like how to shoot it. <laughs> but, uh, but it still came out really good, and, and we, uh, it, it was not nearly as much of a headache as I, as I thought it was going to be. That's great wow. to hear, man. Yeah, we're going to have the actual... Wait, the actual video hasn't dropped, right? Uh, no, but there is a trailer on There's YouTube a trailer, right yeah. We'll put the yes. trailer up in there, and okay. man, it's great. Yeah, the tra thank yeah. You, I think you. if you watch the trailer, it, you'll be able to like piece everything together on like, yeah. whoa, that was done, you know, really, really well. And again, it's you know, it's best if you guys just go and watch it yourself, um, mm -hmm. just so you can dissect it because it's like you'll have like you can reference this video um, on YouTube or Danny's video. Sorry, on Vimeo. Um, you can reference that if you're just looking for like, th what does the VFX really look like? Mm -hmm. But then, you know, seeing the full version of how it is so seamless is like crazy. It's wild. Like <laughs> this morning, I like masked the sky out of a shot and I was so proud of myself. <laughs> and I was like, yeah. I was like, man, that's like rocket science for me. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's fun. It, that, uh, that, the one shot where like he's throwing the mm -hmm. hat up and it's Russell yeah. who catches it. That That's probably was, one of my favorites. Uh, that was like, I, I want to say they shot the kid um, like in the morning and then Russell came mm -hmm. through at night or like in the evening. And so it was like two yeah. completely different times a day. And, uh, and Dennis was like, hey, I hope this is fine. I hope you can do this. <laughs> You're like, <laughs> Which yeah. Which is, he knows, he knows I can handle yeah. it. That's why, he, that's why he says yeah. that. <laughs> And uh, awesome. I asked them to get like one clean plate of just the sky and they did. So they like mm. just oh, pointed good. their camera like just to towards the sky just in case we needed to to replace it, which eventually we did. Um, the the camera motion between like panning panning up and then panning down had to basically be hand animated. And so the, that's that's why, like in the video, you can see the house is like cut out. So there's no sky in one. It drops mm -hmm. below frame, and then the sky is like hand animated to look like the camera is looking yeah. up and then down. Jeez. And then um, that was that's what was going yeah. through my head. I was like, how the heck did they freaking shoot that? Because that is insane. And it's like, again, I'm no VFX guy, so my head goes to like how you're shooting it and like oh they had to get this type of shot and they did this and they they did this so it's like any time an individual is assuming what was done to accomplish a shot might you might be wrong you have to open to being wrong and it's like mm -hmm. you know and just but just listening to like how you guys did it is wild were you yeah, on set it, danny i was not there was no budget okay. for a visual effects supervisor to be on set for this one mm -hmm. And so, which was another reason why I was like kind of anxious about it. I was like, oh man. So like, I was like, I just have yeah. to make the most detailed notes possible and then hand them over and hope they like, and hope mm -hmm. they do it. And they did, they knocked it out of the park. Yeah. How does it go with the coloring process? Um, just on your end. So you're, you're editing the log, right? Uh, clean. And then it goes to a colorist from there. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Um, I did not work super closely with the colorist on this one. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, I, think I mean, do you, I tried do you to like match... really have to? Like, do you have to match anything on your end, as far as color I, goes? There's a yeah, especially oh, okay. because they were shot at two different times of day. Of course, um, yeah, that makes there, sense. And and I mean, given the fact that like it's supposed to show that time passes, it's like mm -hmm. the continuity of of the colors and like where the sun is 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 not mm -hmm. extremely important. 
Um, but definitely you want you want to like match those two shots as closely as possible to not make it like super mm-hmm. jarring. Um, okay. So those shots, and then plus the sky, and also even the hat was taken from another shot. So it was like Jeez. four wow. four different shots altogether comped into that one into one. And like e- yeah, wow. even the hat needed to be uh, almost like frame by frame animated to make sure like the the colors like stayed consistent um we we spent i want to say like i want to say the version that you see now in the trailer is like v10 Mm -hmm. of that shot especially like mostly all the edits were like of the hat falling (laughs) Mm -hmm. wow it's like art directing the fall of the hat because at first it felt like it was weighted it like went up and and like just (laughs) shot right back down and i was yeah, like you looks good went to bed woke up. down yeah yeah and it's like it's yeah. one of those things where it looks good until you look at it with uh with fresh eyes and you're like oh this is garbage <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> or or it takes like someone else like hey like peer around your shoulder like hey can you take a look at this for me and it's like yeah it looks, it looks mm-hmm. terrible <laughs> and oh, then, uh, yeah it's complete <laughs> yeah so and, and then, if you oh go ahead no finish what you're saying Oh, I was gonna say, and then you go, you know, get a beer or something down, downstairs. There's a nice little bar right, right down there, and then come back up and work until you know way after midnight <laughs> to make sure it That's looks good. That's funny. So looking back at the entire process for the visual effects on this piece, um, what are some things or one thing that you would have done differently or something that you learned from yourself or of yourself, you know, through that process? Ooh, I think the, the main thing I would have done differently, which wouldn't have even been possible is out of beg and beg and beg and begged for that last shot to be in camera and to like, mm. to, to like have the kid throw it, leave the leave the shot and have Russ there to catch it all in come camera. Catch it. Yeah, I think uh it would have come out a lot better than than it did. But I still think it came out great. But that's definitely one thing that I was like, oh man, if like next time I I would love to see this happen in camera. Yeah. And yeah, and I know there's you know, there's layers of if it's possible, like you said, it, w- it literally wasn't possible. But you know, at the very least it's like, you know, for you as a VF, if you were on set as a VFX supervisor, it would have been a lot easier for you to say, no, we need to, sh- like, you you need to shoot it like this so we can actually accomplish, you know, like, what we needed. Mm-hmm. Or it's like, maybe he wasn't there, but you could at least shoot it a different way or something else Definitely. to, you know, whether it's making your life easier or making it look more realistic, whatever the case may be. Um, yeah. I, I would say, too, like, one thing I wish I had done differently was maybe write out like a full document i think i really just texted dennis like even on the day he was like hey he like, would like send me photos of like tracking marks mm-hmm. or whatever and be like hey is this good mm-hmm. and then just have and we were just like texting back and forth i think it would have been a lot easier to have just a document for him to refer to um mm-hmm. and in something where like i could really take the time and be like super granular about how to pull it off and just be super clear um uh, especially because like in there's that one shot where Russ is looking into the mirror and he sees uh, his he sees him as a kid inside and the the trackers were on like the wrong the wrong plate they shouldn't have been on that one mirror uh, which is uh-huh. completely my fault because it's something that like I didn't specify to them mm-hmm. that all they knew is mm-hmm. kids in the mirror were gonna put trackers on it uh, and then that just you know made extra work for me <laughs> to, to paint those <laughs> out for that for that shot. Um, How long so did I it think, take you from beginning to uh, end? The, the whole project? Uh, yeah, just grabbing, uh, you know, you, once yeah. you got the footage or the edit um, and I, then the, the deliverable. I can't quite remember. I want to say I was done with VFX in, I think, like a week or two. Was like this The whole post-production for this actually moved really quick. Um, That's great. Yeah, and then it was maybe, oof. I actually I can't even speak to the rest of the timeline just because, um, I just don't remember it. <laughs> but yeah, it was like shortly after that that the um, the color was then locked, and then um, shortly after that 
we had uh, a score done, which was fantastic, and they did an awesome job on it. Um, yeah. And then, yeah, after that, the only, like, the last part was creating titles for it, which actually took way longer than it should have. Did you do um, the titles? I did do the titles, and uh, oh, sweet. I don't like them. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh really? They're, they're, I actually liked them. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, thank you. They, they uh, at first they were like, "Hey, we want uh, like a flowery title." That was like the producers, like the, the top of the of the totem pole. Mm-hmm. So they were like, "We want flowery title titles," and I gave them this like real fancy type thing, and they were like, "No, we wanted to match like the the font that's on the shirt," and I was like, "That's a custom font." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. To, like, so I I took the an image of the shirt that's on like their store page online, brought it into After Effects and used their um, auto trace tool and then used that mask to like generate a, um, a shape layer and just like put that on the text. So it's like literally the same shape now that from, <laughs> from the font. And they were like, this looks oh great. Thank God. you. <laughs> You're a magician. Oh my goodness. Dude. You are a magician. <laughs> you know, it's funny. Danny actually does some magic. So that's, that's great. He's oh, a magician. Funny. I think and, like, you know, real. I've I've been meeting a lot more like uh, filmmakers out here who also came from like magician or came from magic. Really? I think the I think the road to like film and VFX in particular to like from magic I think is a lot shorter than than even I realize. Yeah, it's all gags, dude. It's mm-hmm. great. Yeah. Wow, that's, that's, that's awesome. interesting. Yeah, because it's like my mind never goes to like what can we do and post for something like that it's obviously you never want to hear fix it and post but like yeah. when you're talking about vfx it's like it's post heavy but you have to shoot for it you know but in my mind it's like you know how many times has uh, the thought crossed where it's like oh this is a vfx type you know shot in mm-hmm. again goes back to the industry the area is there high demand for it here <laughs> definitely like you're not going to see very many spots like that shot here in Pensacola. I'm not saying people wouldn't or can't do it because you know plenty of people who can do it, but it's just there's not a high demand for it here, and it's just like there's there is a lot of creativity here, but it really is another level of creativity in bigger markets, you know, because mm-hmm. just the people you're around. True. Yeah, it's funny you should say that. Like you never want to hear fix it in post. Uh, I. When my phone rings, it is usually people calling me saying like, "Hey, uh, I need you to uh, to like remove <laughs> this, this from post. the shot, or I need you to clean." It's usually cleanup yeah. of some sort. It's always mm-hmm. like, and and because it's like the last thing, it's always like on a shoestring budget, and mm-hmm. like it, it, they need a turnaround time by like tomorrow morning. Um, yeah, but right. so it was yeah. very like refreshing <laughs> to be on this project where it the the VFX that I was doing served the story more and. And it, mm-hmm. it wasn't. It didn't feel like tedious tech, technical work. It felt like uh, it was a lot more creatively fulfilling. I think. Wow, wow. that is awesome. So, um, to kind of like wrap things up for you know being in the mind of someone like you, Danny. Like you know what, and you kind of said it a little bit at the beginning, but particular visual effects. Like, are there certain resources that people can go to or? Are there, you know, other people that we can keep our eye out for when it comes to like specifically like the VFX world? Because I really feel like it's almost a different world than the mind of like a producer, director, or DP, because I just don't see what you guys see. <laughs> uh, yeah, it very much is a different world. Um, I don't think it, it has to be that way, though. Uh, a mm-hmm. few people... I would say to keep your eye out for our uh, definitely Patrick Lawler. Um, just he's doing amazing things in particularly the AI space right now and like using AI oh, wow. tools to, to, to create art, which is fantastic. See, different um, world. It's a different world, <laughs> yeah. yeah. 100%. And it's it's people like that that will like spearhead um, that sort of technology to be used in like in feature films, which I think is wow. super exciting. Um, mm-hmm. uh, Film Riot is another great YouTube channel that I learned a lot of VFX from, and their VFX artist right now, Ryan Thompson, also doing just great stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, 
and and he's also like another resource that I regularly reach out to and just, and just ask him like, hey, uh, can uh-huh. you can I like pick your brain on this thing? And uh, mm-hmm. he's a super good dude. And um, even uh, oh my gosh, he's gonna kill me because I can't remember his last name. Ryan <laughs> is the uh, uh, visual effects supervisor for Step Studios. Uh, mm-hmm. I love him. And I can't remember his last name for the life of me. <laughs> but oh, that's funny. they're doing step, they're though. doing yeah. great stuff also, uh, mm-hmm. and like definitely like pushing the boundaries. Their the content that they put out is is uh, very different. Chris, I think it was you who like introduced me to even like their their style of work and yeah, they're they're definitely leaning in towards like almost creating a genre of video i think and a lot of it has to do with with post and what they're doing in in their post house so i I respect Mm -hmm. them a lot for that that is awesome it's crazy i feel like it's all coming from the story you know what i mean like a beautiful story can you guys create this yes we can you know what i mean um almost every step video i watch i'm blown away yes by the vfx but the story behind almost everything is just it blows me away dude 100%. 100%. And I think that's because like they involve their their post crew in the the pre-production phase. We've talked about this. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's like the you just sometimes that's I think that's why there's is this like separation of worlds between like directors, producers and VFX because a, mm-hmm. a lot of producers or art directors they, they just don't know what's possible and or they think mm-hmm. it's right. going to cost a ton of money to pull it off. And so I think I think what they're doing is like bridging that gap and like actually having a conversation mm. with their artists and and just m- making really cool stuff happen. Wow. Yeah, you got to meet that team, right? Didn't I you, did. Like... Yeah, they were some of the first uh, people that I met out here. And it was, funny story when I told them that I was from uh, Pensacola, uh, it was Nick Martini that I was talking to. He's the CEO of of Stepped, and. Mm. Uh, and he was like, "Oh, Pensacola. So you you know uh, Chris Jadala then?" And I was like, "What?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's I, I guess they they have like history uh, having worked together on a few projects. Which I thought was mm-hmm. like it's it's a small world, and then in production, it's like even a smaller world. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah so I think they film cool like a who is it? Bubba Watson is the golfer, right? Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. They filmed that and spot know, for like Oakley. Yeah. Who who else like? Other guys out here like David Cook and uh, Matthew Coughlin, who have all like worked on Oakley spots with them and stuff. So, mm-hmm. yeah, man. Well, that's they're great. Doing, Danny. Really where can uh, yeah, where can people follow you? I am at VFX Danny uh, with an underscore at the end on Instagram. Beautiful. Uh, I, uh, yeah, I don't I don't do much of anything else other than Instagram right now. <laughs> <laughs> right on. Very cool. No, that's totally cool. Danny, we, we really appreciate you coming on. I feel like my eyes have been opened to this whole new world that's possible with mm-hmm. VFX and like and you're right, you know, we do, you know, as a producer director, it's like I'm like slightly intimidated to even consider post production, knowing that okay, like here's my costs for all these. Now I've got to add this. It's probably going to, you know, making that assumption that's not true, that it's, it's going to cost an arm and a leg when all you have to do is ask and have a conversation. So, um, like I said, my mind's definitely open and, you know, wanting to be able to incorporate more of these things because at the end of the day, we all want to elevate our brands. We want to elevate our videos. And, you know, at least for us, you know, after this conversation, it sounds like the easiest thing to do one maybe not the easiest thing but one of the better things you can do to elevate your video is to incorporate some level of visual effects to make it pop give it more flair make it more sexy whatever you want but you know i think it's really interesting that we can do it at a feasible rate too absolutely yeah i think when it's uh when it's planned for properly and and you shoot like for for the edit, I know you guys talk about that all the time too, and you like shoot for mm-hmm. the effects. Um, mm-hmm. It can it can really like enhance your your story. Dang, I love that man. I really love <laughs> beautiful it. Danny. Thank you so much for being on with us, brother. Thank we'll you guys. I love you guys. Sounds good. Too, buddy. Buddy.